Today we'll learn how to make this underwater scene, which is like a tunnel that you're diving into and bubbles rising up to your face that goes on infinitely because it's a perfect loop. We've done something similar in this video over here that you can check out. It'll be linked in the top right corner. But today we'll be using only geometry nodes and the outcome and the process is completely different. So let's learn how you can create this particular animation. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and we'll change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. We'll press new to add in a new geometry node tree and then we can select the group input and press X to delete the default cube. Then we can press shift A and search for a cylinder and plug this mesh into the group output. Now we want the cylinder to be much longer and we want it to be on the Y axis. To do that, we'll change the depth to something like 10 meters and to change it onto the Y axis, we'll press shift A and search for a transform geometry node, plug that in after the mesh and change the rotation on the X by 90 degrees. Now we have 10 units on the y-axis. Next up you see if you change it to the wireframe view by pressing this button we don't have any geometry around the rings. To increase that we can just change the side segments to something large and we can make them roughly square so we can press 3 on our keypad to go into the side view and just make these roughly square. So I'll go with maybe 64 segments. Once you're done with that if you go back to your solid view you see we have faces on the ends which we don't want so we'll change the fill type from n-gon to none. And this is our base cylinder. Now we have to give this some sort of noise, which we had previously done using a displace modifier. But since we're in geometry nodes, we don't need to do that anymore. We can press shift A and search for a set position node and plug that in right here and play around with the offset. So we'll press shift A and search for a noise texture. And we'll also set it from 3D to 4D so that we can change the random seed by playing around with the W slider in case we don't like it. Then we can plug this color into the offset. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that everything shifts up by 0.5 on all of the axes. So we'll press shift A and search for a vector math node. Remember, we have to use the color socket because we want data on all three of the axes. If you just use the factor, you'll see the displacement is happening only along this diagonal. You can see it better if we just increase the scale and maybe increase the strength. So to increase the strength, we can search for a math node and set it to multiply. So if you increase the strength, you can see how it's moving only along this diagonal and not really moving in all of the other directions. Similarly, if you use the color value and pass it through just a normal math node and not a vector math node, it still maintains that singular axis because the normal math node gives out only a single value as the output and not a vector. That's why if we actually take a vector math node and we set that to multiply, plug this in here, change this factor to five, on all of the axes and plug it into the offset, you'll see that the motion is actually happening in all of the axes, which is exactly what we want. And that's why we have to use a vector math node and we have to use the color output of the noise texture and not the factor. Now to actually bring this back to the center, we have to subtract it on all three of the axes. So again, we can search for a vector math node, plug that in here and change it from add to subtract and we'll subtract it by 0.5 on all of the axes. Now it comes back to the center. Next, we don't need to multiply it by five, so we can reduce these values to one, but we'll keep the multiply node because we'll be using it in a second. And I'll just reduce the scale to something like one unit, and that makes it nice and smooth. Now, if you actually go to the top view, you'll realize that this does not end at a perfect straight line, and there's some displacement on the Y axis as well. When you actually apply a mirror modifier or try to loop this perfectly, there will be a lot of overlap, which we don't want. I'll show you that in a, before we make the changes so that you can see what the issue is. If we press shift A and search for a transform geometry node, as well as a join geometry node so that we can have both the instances, we can plug the join geometry in here, take this geometry, plug that into the transform and plug this right out here. Now we can scale this on the Y axis by minus one units. And that is the exact same as adding in a mirror modifier, which is a technique that you'll find all over YouTube to create perfect loops when creating linear tunnels like this. However, it's mirrored in the exact same position. We need to move it to the side. So we have to translate it on the Y axis by the length of the cylinder, which is 10 units. If you actually look at it right now, there's a little bit of overlap happening in regions like this. And there are some regions where there's nothing. So you can see over here, there's nothing here. There's overlap occurring. And to fix this, we don't want any noise to happen on the Y axis. So all we do is on the multiply node over here, we can change this Y value to zero and immediately there's no displacement on the Y and this becomes a perfect seamless loop with no overlap whatsoever. And that is why we use this second multiply node 
And now we can always press Alt D to create a linked duplicate and then press Y so that it moves only on the Y axis and just move it by 20 units and you will get a perfect seamless loop. You switch off overlays, you can see even this matches up perfectly. When you actually go through it with the camera, it'll be a seamless loop. Next up, this is still very blocky. We need it to be much smoother, so we need to actually subdivide it. So we press Shift A and search for a subdivision surface modifier or node and plug it in over here. We can increase the levels to something like two. And to see how long each of these operations are taking, we can actually expand this and just switch on timings. And you can see if you increase the levels to three, it takes 755 milliseconds to just calculate that. Whereas on levels two, it just takes 120 milliseconds. So you can see how much of time it's taking and decide what is the best level for you. Now I'm gonna just smooth it out by pressing Shift A and searching for a set shade smooth node and plugging that in over here and it becomes smooth and exactly how I want it to be. Next, this is going to have to have its own material. So I'll press Shift A and search for a set material node and plug it in right here. And I'll choose the default material for now. And we'll go to the material properties down here and change this name to cube. And I'll also press plus to create a new material. And this material is going to happen for our bubbles. So we'll call it bubbles. So we have to actually add in these bubbles. So to add in the bubbles, we can go ahead and move this group output out and just organize these nodes a little bit better. But I'll go ahead and just select these nodes, press control J to create a frame, go to the node tab over here and label this as displacement. We'll take this transform geometry, press control J and label this one as mirror. After which we can press shift A and search for a cube. And we have to join this with all of these. So press shift A and search for a join geometry node, plug it in right here and take this cube and plug it into the joint geometry. Now this is what the cube currently looks like. So let's press seven to go to the top view and just zoom into this cube node and increase the size to some amount till it comes outside the cylinder. So I think a value of 2.4 is going to bring it outside the cylinder. However, I also need it to be the length of the cylinder. So that's on the y-axis, we'll change it to 10 units. And remember, we also duplicated the cylinder and added another version of it, which is perfectly mirrored. So we need two of these. If we simply increase this on the Y, there will be some amount of region that is just wasted. Because if you go to the wireframe view, we don't require anything to be calculated in this region. So of course, it's up to you whether or not that makes too much of a difference. If you don't want that, you can always just set position and move this along the Y. So that's what we'll do. We'll press Shift A and search for a set position node, plug this in here and just move it along the Y by five units. And that'll bring it to the perfect start and you'll have the cubes instanced properly. Now you can go back to the solid view and you don't want these cubes to actually just be cubes. You want them to instance the spheres or the bubbles onto them. So we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh to volume node, plug that in over here. And now we have a volume, so we need points within this volume. So we'll press shift A and search for a distribute points in volume node and plug that in right here. Now we have points distributed all over and you can play around with the density if you feel like having it more dense or less dense, but I'll keep it as is for now. Next, we require these points to actually be spheres and not just points. So we'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node, plug that in right over here. And we actually have to instance spheres onto it. So we'll press shift A and search for icosphere. And the reason why I'm using an icosphere is that I can just make it smoother by increasing the subdivisions instead of playing around with the rings and two different values. So plug this mesh into the instance and now we have icospheres present, but clearly the, the icospheres are way too large. So we'll reduce the radius to 0.1 and that seems all right, but I can go ahead and start increasing the subdivisions to maybe something like three or even four. And then I want them to be shaded smooth. So I'll press shift A and search for a set shade smooth and plug that in right here. Now the scale, I don't want all of them to be the exact same size. So again, shift this a bit further, press shift A and search for a random value node. And we're going to keep it on float so that it changes it by the same amount on all three of the axes. And it remains circular and just plug that into the scale. Now we have some really small bubbles and some larger bubbles. Next, I don't want these bubbles to actually be present so close to the edge that it gets clipped off. So I'll just go back to the cube node and just start reducing the size on the X and the Z. So I'll make it maybe two meters and that should just have lesser spheres intersecting with the walls. You could reduce it even further if you feel like. Now I can just take all of these, control J and call it bubbles. Now for these bubbles, I need to set the bubble material. So after this instance on points, I'll press shift A and search for a set material node and just plug that in after the instance on points and I'll choose bubbles from here. Once you're done with this, you can start off the actual texturing. And to do that, we have to switch from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and switch from 
a viewport shading of solid to render and we can set all of our render defaults so let's go to our render properties switch on bloom and switch on screen space reflections next we'll take our light from the outline over here and just press alt g to clear its location and then just grab it on the y-axis to move it back by quite a bit so i'll move it maybe to somewhere around there and that's all right for now we can actually start off the texturing of the individual objects so we can select our geometry node object Go to the materials and select tube first. If you can't see the nodes in the shader editor, press A to select everything and period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. I want this to have a base color of black and you can play around with the roughness to what you want. If you make it really low on the roughness, it'll have quite more reflections. If you make it really high, it won't have reflections at all. So I'm going to keep it at something like 0 0.6 for the time being. We might play around with that later on. But that's about it for the tube. Next, we have to play around with the bubbles. And for that, since bubbles are see-through, the first thing that I have to do is go down to the settings in the material properties and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. And I'll switch off show back face as well. After that, I'll just press shift a and search for a layer weight node and plug the facing value into the alpha of the principled psdf now you can see you can actually look right through the bubbles which is exactly what we want but for the areas that we can see i want them to be metallic i want them to have much lower roughness so that they reflect things much better let's have a roughness of 0.2 and i'll press shift a and search for a color ramp just so that we have better control and i'll just bring the black in so that more of it becomes transparent bring the white in so that the edges become more defined and that's actually all we need next up in my light i'm going to also change the color to a very slight bluish color because that's what the color would be under the sea next up i'm going to change this shader editor from object to world so that we can play around with the world settings so again press period to centralize the nodes I want the background to be completely black and as for the volume i'm going to add in a volume scatter node so press shift a and search for a volume scatter node plug that right into the volume and we'll reduce the density to 0.2 now for my actual sides that is the tube material i don't want it to cast any shadows so i'll go down under shadow mode i'll change it to none and that just makes these sides a little brighter but i do want the bubbles to cast shadows because that just looks nice so now we can do the actual animation of our camera so We'll select the camera, press Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation. And if you do want to see it, you can just switch on overlays by pressing this button again. Now you can rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and grab it on the Y axis by minus five units so that it just comes to the perfect start of our cube. Now you can press zero to go into the camera view, go to the camera settings, and I'm going to go to viewport display and just increase passport out all the way to one so that I don't see anything outside the camera view. Next for my focal length, I want it to be fairly large so that the motion seems much slower. So I'll increase the focal length to something like 100. And at that focal length, the bubbles seem far too large so i'll change that a little later next we know that the size of one cube is exactly 20 units with the mirror and all of that so i'll set all of my animation defaults and start the animation we'll go to the output properties change the frame rate to 30 frames per second the end frame is going to be 150 so that it's a five second long animation output folder can be wherever you want it to be file format i'm going to save it as an ffmpeg video and for that, I'm going to change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of course that's really lossless. Then I'll go to frame zero by pressing the back arrow, selecting the camera and then tapping I location. And finally expand the timeline a little bit by bringing your cursor here, clicking and dragging and going to the last frame, which is frame 150, grabbing it on the Y axis by 20 units because that was the length of one single cube and then select the camera and press i location now to make it perfectly looping without slowing down and speeding up you have to come down here press a to select all the keyframes and t linear so now if you go into the camera view and just play the animation you can see how the camera moves but you see the light is not moving with the camera so you can go back to frame zero select the light and after selecting the light select the camera as well you can do that from the viewport over here by pressing shift select or you can come to the outliner and press control select the camera then bring your cursor back to the viewport and press Control p and then set parent to object so now the light is also going to move away from the camera as the camera moves and if you go to frame 150 and frame zero it should be the exact same and that way you know that it's a perfectly looping animation in case you see any difference for example in frame zero i can see a little bit of objects present over here but at frame 150 i don't see that because it just ends i have to go ahead and select this particular cube and press alt d y and move it by another 20 units 
and that way it will be visible again and between frame 0 and 150 you'll see absolutely no difference which means it's a perfectly looping animation and if you want to see the exact speed at which it's rendering because right now it might be lagging a bit you can go to playback and change the sync from play every frame to frame dropping and that way you'll be able to get a realistic idea of how fast it is but don't trust the bloom because you can clearly see it's getting washed out by so much but the moment you stop it it recalculates and this is what it's going to look like once it's rendered out so along with that the only thing that's left to do is switching back to the geometry node editor changing the max size for our bubbles to something slightly smaller so i'll change the max to 0.6 that way we just have smaller bubbles and i might play around with the roughness of the actual tube material other than that you can go to the material properties color management and change the look to something like high contrast in case that's what you're looking for you can play around with the exposure and gamma value as well to see what suits your requirements and once you're happy with exactly what it looks like you can go ahead and press render animation so that's all for this particular tutorial and this is the final result if you've learned something or have any questions comment it down below and I'll respond to all of your queries for as long as I possibly can. If you want this blend file, it will be available on Patreon along with just the animations and wallpapers created for all of these. A new video comes out every single day, so subscribe to stay tuned and until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.